Welcome back to Book View. Now, we've been having great fun here with Heather Poole. She's the author of the New York Times bestseller, Cruising Attitude, tales of crash pads, crew drama, and crazy passengers at 35,000 feet. Now, Heather, last segment, we talked about the image many have of travel, romance, and lifestyle, and how you were advised early in your career to just don't do it. I want to go back to graduating from flight school. Now, you've learned that you've made the cut and you were on your way to your first crew base. I was stunned to read. When, when you got out of flight school, you've successfully made it. I was shocked to learn that on an $18,000 a year salary, you had to pay $800 for your uniforms and suitcase out of your first two paychecks. How could that be? I don't know. And it's not even a nice, like, it's not even quality. Our dress, like, I can't say what airline I work for, but it's one of the big ones. And our dress is $99, and I still have to pay for it. So that's why, you know, you see some of us, they might be, like, unraveling a little bit. You're wondering, what's up with that? Now you know. Or, I mean, yes, we had to pay for our own uniforms, and we didn't make anything. And, and at the same time, we as new hires were making more than most flight attendants. And here's something else that's interesting about pay. Um, we, as flight attendants for a larger airline, were making more money than pilots made, first-year pilots for a regional aircraft, I mean, regional airline. I mean, people just have no idea. <laughs> I mean... And there's so much time um, that we aren't paid. We are only paid when the aircraft doors shut. So if there's a delay, trust me, we're more upset about it than you are. Because that's time that we're not being paid. And it's the most stressful time that, of my day, usually. That's when people are angry and they have questions and they want water and they're complaining about being a hostage and you know, whatever else they can come up with. And uh, just it's just nuts. I mean, how much time goes that we're not paid and we're on the on the clock. And I think one time I worked it out. It's hard to work out because every year we get a raise and it depends on the kind of trip you fly, which is why the more senior flight attendants are flying to Paris because it's a longer flight. You want to maximize your time in the air opposed to those hops because every time you board, you're not getting paid. So, but I worked it out. And I mean, if you, the hourly rate, including a layover hotel, I mean, it's like $5 an hour. So no one's doing this job for the money. We have this glamorous image, and I think it was Life Magazine had a huge issue recently devoted to the 1950s and 60s career women of the skies, flight attendants, and their glamorous life. You've been doing this now for 17 years. How do you feel about the profession today? It's hard to answer that because I'm still doing the job, and I do it because I actually like it, and I'll continue to do it because I like it. But... I mean, there's so much I wish I could change. And, and one thing that does bug me is when I do see those shows like, oh, the glamorous life, because how quickly we forget that we couldn't afford that glamorous life. I mean, most people weren't traveling. You, most people's grandparents have never been on an airplane. So while everybody's like, oh, look how it used to be. Yeah, well, the good news is it might not be as glamorous or it's like riding a bus today, but more people are able to do it. So that's the positive there. But... I, yeah, I, and I think my biggest pet peeve might be like when other flight attendants who from the past come and like criticize us because I'm like, you couldn't do this job. It is not the same job. I have, well, I can't tell you what I have in my bag, but I have things in my bag that they can't even imagine, you know, like, like we're taught karate now, not like we're not wearing little white gloves and just being trained how not to ting, ding the plate when we serve caviar. It's a totally different job. So I hate when people compare it because they forget that. They, it's, it, there's a reason why it is the way it is. We're all terrified by turbulence. So share with us what it's like from your perspective when you can barely stand and have to help customers secure several hundred pounds worth of carts and trays. What goes on in those turbulent situations? I guess I'm going to sound a little nuts, but turbulence does not scare me. So, And when I'm in that situation, my first thought is, like I'm strapped in my seat and I, and, and just because it stopped for a second doesn't mean it's over. And then everyone starts turning around looking, looking for the flights in it. Cause now they, they, they want their drink now. And I'm like, no, we're not getting up. And I'm feeling really guilty cause I'm not getting up. I'm like, why isn't the captain making a PA? And, 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 but you know what? The captain on my last flight, we did have some really bad turbulence. He made a PA flight attendants, take your jump seat. And we all sit down and this guy just stands up does a leisurely stretch, comes to the back, says, my wife would like some water. And I'm like, you kind of just made a PA. He's like, oh, I didn't hear it because you know why? He had his headphones on. So, you know, like my concern, my fear is that I'm going to have to get up and 
and help someone who's been hurt from turbulence while the turbulence is going on and my, then I'm not covered and I'm going to lose my job because I'm out of work sick, you know? That's what I worry about because we we are no joke. When the turbulence comes, we put our seatbelt on and we are going to sit there until we know it's completely gone because that's how people get hurt. Like no one's no one's been I mean the mo- the biggest injuries we've had are people who've been hurt in turbulence without their seatbelt on. So and a lot of and most half of those injuries are flight attendants. And I'd like to keep my job, so I'm not bringing you that water. <laughs> Well, this has been so interesting that we're actually going to put a fourth segment together. And when we return for part four of our interview with Heather Poole, we're going to talk about dedication to one's work, dealing with the crazies, and then we'll say goodbye with a look at that very thing, saying goodbye when Book View continues. Stay right here. 